Okay, welcome to the Investigative Journal on this February 8th, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can catch my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. They also play the show at 11 a.m., so you can listen to it then. Or if not, go to my website at A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com. That's Arctic beacon.com and you can listen to shows that go back almost 10 years uh, talking about the same subject that we talk and that is the Vatican-led New World Order and uh, it's actually an old world order but we'll get into that at a later time. Uh, Spent the weekend and I I do this uh, usually every four years. I listen to the debates that go on in the Iowa caucus in New Hampshire And I do that purely for (laughs) basically uh, entertainment purposes. I do it to watch the fiction uh, going on in our elections. And I say fiction. It is fiction. It is a story of uh, America. It's a story that they've concocted. The people that they have running are playing the Hegelian dialectic game, which means that there's the left and the right and they rub up against each other and create the synthesis they want. And it matters little anymore who gets elected. Uh, There are controllers behind the scenes, and these controllers have uh, pretty well laid out the strategy for America, and that is to deplete its resources, to deplete its population, to basically turn it into a third world country so that they can then one day rebuild it. The one world order is an old concept. It's an old world order. And this goes back to the times of Babylon. And that's what we try to do here is connect the dots between the Vatican, the governments of the world, and exactly what is going on in our country. Now, when I listened to these debates. I, you know, the characters that are in this play, this act, our political act, you might as well call it a good theater performance, are on the left, we have uh, socialist Bernie Sanders, who has become a kind of a TV star. He was on Saturday Night Live this week. Of course, Larry David, who, if you don't know who Larry David is, he looks like Bernie Sanders. And basically is very famous for his uh, producing and writing of Seinfeld, the show that uh, I think everyone has watched over and over again, comedy show. Uh, And then, of course, he did a show on his own on HBO called Curb Your Enthusiasm. Many people enjoy his comedy. And I do, too. (laughs) He's made me laugh many times. And uh, made me laugh this weekend, again, when he... uh, did his imitation of Bernie Sanders. And then Bernie Sanders came on Saturday Night Live. Uh, So he's become a television star. Now, let's be clear here. All of these people have. Hillary Clinton was on Saturday Night Live. Uh, Who else? Oh, boy, I can think of all of the top players, all of the leading actors, I call them, in the stage play they're putting on called Uh, the 2016 American elections. Now, so on the Democratic side, you got it pretty easy. It's either going to be this guy, Bernie Sanders, or the star, the old, she's kind of, kind of reminds me of an actress that is getting too old for the stage. And that's Hillary Clinton. And if you listen to her, She has a terrible, terrible monotone voice that is so difficult to listen to, I fear that she will lose the election that is basically going to be presented to you because the people that are producing this stage play are going to say, hey, you know, you've got to change the way you talk. I mean, nobody can listen to this. I mean, I tried to listen to her. And I just basically wiped away everything that I know about the Vatican-led New World Order. And I said, okay, let me just see if her message, let me see her, how her stage, I pretended I was in a theater. 
And Bernie Sanders, he caught my attention. And I like his presentation. He's a unique actor. And he's an old guy too, but he's not on the way out. Now Hillary's this old actress that is having trouble with her presentation. She also always seems to get into these problems that she creates that always are giving her opponents on the stage a chance to like, oh, she's going to jail next week because she hid these uh, secret, secret uh, doc, you know, emails. Or she takes too much money from Goldman Sachs and all, the, uh, all of the uh, special interest groups. That's exactly what they were talking about. And Bernie Sanders brought up that he's not bought and paid by the American people or by the special interests. He has raised so much money, $27 donations from 3 million people so far. 27 bucks a piece. Now, who are these people? Why doesn't anyone look at it? If he can go on and do, see, that is a stage play. You are giving money to go to the theater, just like you give money to uh, rent a movie on YouTube now or, or, or on TV. You, you know, all these, you can just plus a button, rent a movie for $6, etc. Or you can go to the theater and rent. So you're doing the same thing. But when it comes to truth, how come people like Bill Hughes, people like in the Alamo ministry, all these people that are telling you the truth, how come Alberto Rivera, others, how come American people don't donate to them? Can you imagine if my radio show got $1 from 3 million people? Would I then be part of the establishment? It won't happen because people do not want to donate to the truth. That's why they'll go to all these churches and give all their money to the ecumenical movement. But the churches that try to tell you the truth about the book of Revelations gets absolutely nothing or very little. Or they have to scratch out a living uh, doing something else. So the point is, everybody's giving money to the theater. Now, how many people yesterday... How much money passed through America for that game, that Super Bowl game? It's, it's amazing. It, you know, I was looking at it just from that standpoint. So I'm sitting in my living room watching this theater performance. First, I watched Hillary Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders square off. And I found it quite entertaining from the point of view that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton were, it was kind of like the, the left going at it. It was fun. But it was so unrealistic of really what's going on in the world. If you understand, both from a secular and a political view, how they basically are fronting for the people behind the scenes. Now, Hillary Clinton collected for one speech $650,000 for one evening from Goldman Sachs. And the best question of the whole night, and it, it's been reported that her and Bill have collected and since 2014, about $2 million from all these top interest groups. One guy was smart, a journalist, and he said, okay, you say, Hillary, that you don't, you, your votes aren't, uh, you don't really cuddle up to these special interest groups because they give you money. You give a vote or you will do things honestly for the American people. They said, okay, all of these speeches are transcribed. And you have tapes of them. You have you have uh, the written words. Why don't you release everything that you said to Goldman Sachs that night to the American people? And she says, I'll look into it, which was basically it'll never happen. Because she's speaking, she's lying. And when she was asked, why did you take this money? She said, well, that's what they offered. Okay. She seems to always want to put a nail in her coffin when she runs an election. Is that staged? Yes, it's all staged. But it's interesting to note that certain issues do come up. And then we can compare them to really what's going on in the world. 
And we could go out over each one in minutia. I mean, we could start with health care. We could start with the border protection. We can go to many, many other issues. We could go to uh, jobs leaving this country, how to bring them back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But on the Republican side, let's. Uh, then I went to the other other stage play that they have to do on the right. And that gets a little more complicated because they still have about seven people that are on that stage now for these New Hampshire primaries. You know, they have the Iowa caucus, then the New Hampshire primaries. And you have a group of guys here. These actors are, well, you got all types. And you can start with uh, Mr. Kasich, a governor from Ohio, also served in the um, uh, I think he was a senator or a representative, etc. Uh, then you move down the aisle. You got Jeb Bush coming back with the old, uh, you know, you got good old Bush family there. And what was funny this week on the stage of American politics, and I, when I say that, it's, it's basically you get a look at what their performance is. This particular uh, segment of Act One. And then you get behind the scenes. You can see behind the scenes how they put this play together. And this weekend, Barbara Bush, uh, 90 years old, comes running out and protecting Jeb because he's getting punched around by Donald Trump. Can you believe Donald Trump is running for president in the United States and he says he's going to help the American people? You know, he's playing a good part. People love him because he's rich. He's got a lot of money. I mean, he's got gold ashtrays on his uh, airplane. That's the reason to vote for him. But the point I'm trying to get at, this is all a theater act. So we got Kasich, who is a Republican uh, governor from Ohio. Then we got Jeb Bush, the old Bush families being represented. Then we move down the line and we got, um, what, Marco Rubio. And he's one of these young guys uh, coming up in the Senate. He's like a Jack Kennedy of the Republican Party. He's only served one term, so they can rip him apart. Then we move uh, to the center. We have um, Donald Trump was right in the middle because he's supposedly getting, he's the leader right now in the stage play of American politics, getting all the votes. So he's in the middle. Then on to his, uh, to his left, you have Ted Cruz. And we all know Ted being the right of the right of the right. He, in fact, did win the caucus in Iowa in Act 1 of this stage play because of all the evangelical vote. Not a word was mentioned by the, about the Vatican in any of this stuff, even though they're the kingpins behind the scenes. I found that interesting. Not one question about them. If I, if I was there, I'd ask that question, and they would have hauled me out. Yes, guards would have came and taken me out because I would be considered starting a riot or hate speech. But that's the truth. They don't want the truth in this stage play. This play is geared towards keeping America under the thumb of the Vatican behind the scenes. But that one will never be said. So we have Ted Cruz, who basically uh, all these, you know, Donald Trump comes. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't want to bring one Muslim into this country. I mean, he's basically creating strife. That's his role. And sticking, uh, you know, this idea that uh, rich is better, blah, 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 and I'm going to help the poor. Good friend of all, you know, Donald works with everybody, he says. But do you work, Donald, with the Cardinal of Rome, the Cardinal in New York? Do you ever, do you understand really how this all works? They all understand how this works, do they? They have to, or they wouldn't be there. So basically, then we move, we move down the line. And what did I say? Ted Cruz. Oh, then we have, uh, God, I'm even forgetting. Oh, yes, we have Dr. Ben Carson, the token black intelligent guy who basically is too nice to be up on the stage. So they want to bring a black guy. The, 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 you know, you have to, this right wing conservative group has to show that they are racially equal. So they bring on Dr. Carson, who's a bright man. I mean, he's a, he's a doctor and he says some really good things. But he doesn't address all the issues either. You know, they talk about the, these, vi they don't get into the, you know, he's a believer in the FDA and all this, and that's all garbage. He never should have, you know, in the real world, 
not the stage play that we're watching here. The FDA is killing you with all these drugs. That was never mentioned. Healthcare was never, you know, it was never mentioned that there are natural cures for cancer and all these things. And what about the 13 doctors, Dr. Carson, that have been killed because of their looking at cures for cancer that don't consist of radioactivity? You know, and we've done shows on that. Where's all this stuff? Because that is not, that's real life. This is a play. This is a theater performance. So that's his role. He's the token black smart doctor. Then, of course, we have the winner last night, I considered, was uh, uh, Mr. Christie, a lawyer, the governor of New Jersey. We all know about him because of uh, his national stance on all of those tragedies that occurred in, in New Jersey. And Christie basically was the hitman on that uh, in this stage play. Uh, he took part Marco Rubio, basically brought his... Uh, brought his uh, trial lawyer experience to the test. And boy, he was the best in that play. That's what they wanted. They wanted him to win that. Trump, of course, held his own. And they're still saying he's going to win that election. And so we have all these guys playing these parts. But none of them ever deal with the truth. Really, they don't. I mean, it's all a play. So what I'm getting at here is you got to watch this for entertainment purposes. That's my whole point. This is an entertainment show. And then, you know, if you look at it from that point of view and don't believe that this is the real world, then you can deal with it. Now, I thought one thing was quite interesting. They got onto the subject of the war on drugs. And their idea was to, and basically they were saying, that everyone has been touched by heroin. That one in two people in New Hampshire where this was going on, there's a heroin epidemic in the United States and in Massachusetts especially. I mean, this is like, they're all just, then they all stated, you know, we had a guy in our family, my brother was on drugs. My Donald Trump said, my brother died of an alcohol problem. I mean, each one presented, some of them presented their personal views and how they have to stop the Mexican cartels from bringing heroin into our country. They're saying, Massachusetts people are saying that's basically what we have to do. Well, did you ever realize that we talked about this, the truth now? This is the stage play they're giving you. The heroin doesn't exist. You know, it's transferred to some of the cartels in Mexico course, and who controls them? Where does it originate? Perhaps in uh, Afghanistan? Or was it in Burma when we decided, when, the, when Pope Pius XII and our OSS, which turned into the Catholic CIA intelligence agency, Will, Bill Donovan and uh, James Angleton, they came up with Operation Gladio. Now, there was not one mention of Operation Gladio in this stage play. Now, that's why I consider it to be fiction, because they're dealing, here's their idea. we got to stop the war on drugs. We don't want, you know, do you realize that prior to Operation Gladio back in the 50s, and six, when the 60s hit, when they finally got it rolling, before that, there were very few cases of drug addiction in this country, of course. It, but now it's kind of like, oh, go to your local store and buy some heroin, or let's legalize marijuana. Let's do this all. Now, to me, none of it's necessary. And the reason they're pushing heroin into this country is basically to <laughs> destroy it, destroy its people. And that's what they were talking about. They were talking about the destruction of the American people, people dying. And their, 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 their solution was this. We're going to build a wall between us and Mexico, and Mexico, Donald Trump is going to pay for it. Now, Cruz said, I'm going to hire Donald Trump to pay to build it. Uh, so they're going to build a wall. Then they want to triple the size of the Border Patrol. And then, what was their solution? Then, instead of jailing people who are uh, first-time heroin addicts, they put them in rehabilitation centers. And 
Governor Christie was saying they tried that in New Jersey and it's working. No, it's not working. Okay, so now you know, we've closed down some prisons and blah, blah, blah. But the point is, in the fiction world they're creating here, this theater play sounds good. That's the play they want to present to you, the theater, the entertainment. But did they ever talk about Operation Gladio, the CIA's involvement, why we are spending covert money, billions of dollars, funneled through the uh, funneled through the uh, Vatican Bank, which is the money laundering operation? No, they don't want to. You're not going to stop drugs the way they did. The only way you're going to stop it in the real world is to realize the truth about Operation Gladio that we talked about the other day on this show. Now, <laughs> I saw a story. This is so funny. Now, what I'm going to do, I got about three minutes here, so I don't want to, this, this story comes from El Paso, was sent to me, and it's regarding the Minutemen, it's a group of militia who are trying to protect the borders, you know, and stop illegal drugs and trafficking and stuff like that. But I wonder if they really understand who is trafficking it. They should listen to the show, understand Operation Gladio. Now, the people on that stage who are basically actors given a script and each one playing a different part, I think they understand the truth, but they can't say it. And, they, you know, it's not part of the play. It's not part of the theater. They're not going to do it. Because if they did, you got to rewrite the whole script. you got to rewrite all of America. The whole theater performance, I mean, everything they've done from 1776 or even prior to that has been part of this theater. Now, you're not, you can do it. Why not? It's only fiction. Fiction, folks. It's all fiction. Oh, there's a lot of things that really do go on. I mean, sure, people do get hooked on heroin. Uh, drug cartels actually are there, but the point is the other part of it, the creation of it, why it's there, why wars are being created. Gladio tells you this is a true, uh, and the Vatican is instrumental in this because they don't know what to do with all this money. They're getting billions of dollars. Then they funnel it into what they did in, uh, you know, Nicaragua, what they did in South America, all these, you know, Contras. Then they go to Al-Qaeda. You know, we created Al-Qaeda. They didn't mention that. Well, that's not part of the theater. Then Al-Qaeda morphs into ISIS, and we're funneling all this drug money that all of these people in Massachusetts and the rest of this country who are getting flooded with heroin, they're getting money, billions of dollars are going back then to, to create and to fund ISIS, their creation, just like they created the Contras and other things. But that is not part of the theater. No, it isn't. It is just not the play. It's just not uh, the entertainment they want to give you. And so when we talk about the reality of this, there are very few people who live in the real world, to be, got, to be honest with you, whether it be spiritual or whether it be uh, secular. And so what really happens then is the fiction becomes reality. Just like when you watch a TV show and all of a sudden you start thinking that's the way life really is. That's why they present it all. It all just comes. That's why when you see NASA, you think that's real. Fake pictures of the earth and all the stories they tell you, but they've created the fiction that has become reality. And the only people that really don't get it are the ones who start researching this stuff, who piece by piece figure out what the real really is, what reality really is. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. Visit crossthborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crossthborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crossthborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the left behind movie 
with actor nicholas cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin if you want true bible prophecy answers get the book the rapture will be cancelled the author exposes the latin rapture origin the seven-year tribulation deception true bible revelation of daniel's 70 weeks the abomination of desolation the restrainer america in the revelation the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and the truth about god's chosen people and so much more about bible prophecy this book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events get the book the rapture will be canceled visit crosstheborder.org c-r-o-s-s crosstheborder.org to get your print epub or pdf version of the book the rapture will be canceled that's crosstheborder.org The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening Okay, we're back on the Investigative Journal on this February 7th, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. Go to my show on First Amendment Radio. They play it every evening, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can get it at 11 a.m. as well, Pacific Time, or go to my website and donate if you want. Hey, Hillary Clinton's getting $650,000 for one speech to Goldman Sachs. Bernie Sanders is getting $27 from 3 million Americans. And this is all fiction. So if you want to get a little bit of the truth, go to my website and donate. Why not? And guess what will happen? I'll get about nothing. Because no one wants to live really in the real world. Now let's look at this from a standpoint, just a personal thing. I was a journalist who lived in the fictional world. Thought it was, you know, reality. And in that, when I did think that, I got paid pretty well. I was, well, let's say journalists never get paid really well unless you really sell out and become like Anderson Cooper and the guys on TV. I think he was a CIA guy. He's also professed to be gay. They always have to have gay guys in there now. Um, That's their political move. We've gotten into shows on that. But anyway, he makes millions of dollars for playing his part. He's a theater actor. That's why Al Pacino makes a lot of money, but at least Al Pacino tells you he's a theater actor. And he's working in Hollywood, probably has compromised himself certain ways. I'm not going to get into his life. But at least you know Al Pacino and all these guys are actors, 
But the real actors are the ones that are really performing this weekend in the, the debates, in these debates. The race to the White House. And <laughs> what's interesting, let's just look at it. You know, if you live in the fictional world, when I did, everything was great. I can get a job. I can go to newspapers, get a job. People like to hear what I was saying. Oh, I could play their game. Once I realized the truth when I lived in Rome, everything dried up. Then when the Internet came, I thought, wow, now I got a chance to really tell the truth. Then I really find out that most Internet stations are controlled by the same people. And you get kicked off the station there when you start talking about the truth. So they're playing a fictional game on the Internet as well. Just the same. And that's in the journalism profession. Now, when you look at the legal profession, I got a law degree. Same thing. If I want to play their game, I could go a long way. I was making good money when I was in law school and stuff working. But when I realized the truth about the legal profession, there's no money there. And then when you try to get a job in either one and they know, all they do is they click on and they go, up, oh, investigative journal, Greg is living in the real world, although they don't think it is. They think he's uh, crazy and living in a fictional world Why they're living in the fiction. You don't get a job. You can't hire a guy like that. He's telling the truth. They don't think that, but that's exactly what's, what's going on. They think they're living in the real world when, in fact, People like Bill Hughes, people like uh, many people on this radio station, many others, uh, Alberto Rivera, Walter Weith, all these people are living the reality. You, What are you living? Right now, as I ask you this question, what are you living? Are you in the real world or the fictional world? And you figure out which one's which. So anyway, I told you before, I, I got a couple little videos planned here, which actually are just audios. Uh, but they're pretty good. I don't want to play them. But I got this this story. We talked about Operation Gladio. It's not part of the theater play uh, that these uh, actors on uh, the Republican and the Democratic side are, are giving you. And people like that. But it was this is so funny because when you look at, uh, they never mentioned the CIA, Catholic Intelligence Agency, actually gets a gets a piece of this money and they're controlling the drug trafficking making sure it goes right they pick who they want to deal uh they pick the cartels they want to work with to get the drugs here so they can make money to then funnel it back through the vatican bank into isis and all these groups so in el paso <laughs> why wasn't this story mentioned because it's not a part of the theater but here's a story that came out and this happened in el paso and uh, two CIA, Catholic intelligence agents, arrested by Minutemen while cro That's why they don't want Minutemen or people to real. they're going to find out the truth. And then they, you know, their whole theater becomes, uh, well, kind of mixed up because they want you to believe that's true. Uh, Minutemen crossing Mexican border, they arrested, uh, they got uh, two <laughs> CIA agents were arrested by these Minutemen. Uh, which is, I guess, our citizens' arrests for crossing the border with 1,300 pounds of cocaine. Hmm. Now, a group of Minutemen watching the Mexican border for illegal migrants and drug traffickers have proceeded to the citizen arrest of two men in an SUV carrying 1,300 pounds of cocaine. The volunteers were completely astonished when the two arrestees pulled out CIA ID cards and explained they were actually carrying the drug as part of their duties and that the cargo belonged to the Central Intelligence Agency, or should we call it the Catholic Intelligence Agency. What are they doing with 1,300 pounds of cocaine? They can get through. They're going to sell it to somebody. They're going to make money, and then it's going to go. You know how they divvy it up. The mob gets some. Cartels get some. The Vatican gets 15% of everything that goes through the bank. And then it's distributed, and then ISIS gets the money to create these wars, to create Operation Gladio. That's where the money's coming to fund all this terrorism today, us. That's left out because that's fiction. The reality you were watching yesterday, that's what they want you to believe. But it's actually fiction, and this is real. The incident took place uh, a couple days, you know, I don't know, it was a week ago or two weeks ago, in, in uh, the desert uh, in Mexico near the Texas city of El Paso. Well, it wasn't near to Texas City of El Paso. If you've ever been down there, there's a lot of deserts over there. 
A group of seven Minutemen saw a large black SUV drive rapidly across the border. They chased the vehicle in their own trucks and achieved to immobilize it after a chase of more than 15 miles. The vigilantes arrested the two men on board and called the Border Patrol, who proceeded to search the vehicle. They discovered dozens of packages of cocaine, totaling an incredible 618.4 kilograms, or 1,363 pounds. You know how much money that's worth? The two men claimed to be CIA operatives based in Mexico and explained that the drug was actually part of an operation of the agency. Oh, here we go. Yeah, they don't want that. We're taking it in and we're getting it off the street. They're going to put it on the street. They presented identity cards that seemed to validate their claim, but the CIA spokesman, Dean Boyd, has officially denied any link between the organization and the two men. <laughs> now, that's a good game they're playing here because that's exactly what they do. We never heard of these guys. They must have made up those ID cards. And that's how they'll play it. And they'll let these guys off to dry or they'll arrest them. Then they'll put them somewhere and you'll never know what happened. Oh, it was, you know, we didn't do anything. Do you believe that CIA guy, that Mr. Boyd? No. He said this, the CIA doesn't take part in any drug smuggling operations at the U.S.-Mexican border. <laughs> uh, that's a lie. A big lie, if you understand Operation Gladio, what we talked about. And he is a part of that fiction theater that uh, we're talking about, that these uh, top actors, these guys are just, well, let's just call them extras. Yeah, they're just extras in the play. Uh, they're nothing. They just happen to be there. And then they got to play their part as an extra. They're getting paid for it. Extras here get paid well. Better than in the movies. But it is a movie. But it's the movie or the fiction of life. Now, both the Border Patrol officers were unconvinced. And so was my dog Max, who is now unconvinced. However, and many of them seem to believe that the Secret Service Agency is hiding something. Both of them had valid accreditations and a receipt for their cargo. A receipt. What a drug dealer in his right mind demands a receipt for 1,300 pounds of cocaine. There is a really something strange about these guys, and we believe the CIA possibly knows more <laughs> than it wants to admit. I, that is a hilarious story proving to you again that Operation Gladio is alive and well in America. Okay. Let's uh, finish this. We, we Now we get uh, the theater play. You know, and you don't even have to... What's the price you're paying for this play? Now, when you go to a stage play in New York or Broadway, you're going to pay a hefty sum. The price you're paying for this play is your soul and your life. Think about that. Now, let's go to something I wanted to do here. Play something from the real world that most people are going to think is fiction. But let's do that because I want to talk about... Uh, they did a 10-minute video called Vatican Crimes. It's called Vatican, quote, owner of the biggest banks and top global companies exposed. It's 10 minutes. Let's go to the real world here, which they will consider to be fiction. Did the world wars, revolutions, and big events of human history evolve naturally? Or were they calculated and pre-planned? If they were pre-planned, who planned them? And what are they planning for the future of humanity? The answer to this puzzling question can be found within the boundaries of three of the world's most powerful cities. Those three cities belong to no nation and pay no taxes. They are Washington's District of Columbia, which is not part of the city of Washington or of the United States, the inner city of London, which is not part of London or England, and Vatican City, which is not part of Rome or Italy. These cities called city-states have their own independent flag, their own separate laws, and their own separate identity. Vatican City is in fact a state, the smallest principality in the world. It lies on the banks of the Tiber, completely surrounded by the city of Rome. Its status as a separate state emerged from the Lateran Agreements of February 1929. It has its own newspaper, postal service, radio and television station, its own flag, and a population of about 1,000. The Vatican.
Vatican also has its own army of Swiss guards, and it even has its own prison. <laughs> rules over approximately 2 billion of the world's 6.1 billion people. The colossal wealth of the Vatican includes enormous investments with the Rothschilds in Britain, France, and the USA, and with giant oil and weapons corporations like Shell and General Electric. The Vatican solid gold bullion worth billions is stored with the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England and the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. The Pope, who is the visible ruler of this colossal global wealth, is one of the richest men on earth. While two-thirds of the world earns less than two dollars a day, and one-fifth of the world is underfed or starving to death, the Vatican hoards the world's wealth, profits from it on the stock market, and at the same time preaches about giving. How did the Pope and Vatican accumulate all that wealth over the millennium? One method was to put a price tag on sin. Many bishops and popes actively marketed guilt, sin, and fear for profit by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for sins they hadn't yet committed and get pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risked eternal damnation in Satan's oven. Pope Leo X rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica, selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven. During the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church not only hoarded the wealth they collected from the poor, but hoarded knowledge. They kept the masses ignorant and in the dark, by denying them a basic education. Like Vatican City, London's inner city is also a privately owned corporation or city-state, located right smack in the heart of Greater London. It became a sovereign state in 1694 when King William III of Orange privatized and turned the Bank of England over to the bankers. By 1812, Nathan Rothschild crashed the English stock market and scammed control of the Bank of England. Today, the city-state of London is the world's financial power center and the wealthiest square mile on the face of the earth. It houses the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England, Lloyds of London, the London Stock Exchange, all British banks, the branch offices of 385 foreign banks, and 70 U.S. banks. It has its own courts, its own laws, its own flag, and its own police force. It's not part of Greater London or England or the British Commonwealth and pays no taxes. The city-state of London houses Fleet Street's newspaper and publishing monopolies. It is also the headquarters for worldwide English Freemasonry and headquarters for the worldwide money cartel known as the Crown. Contrary to popular belief, the Crown is not the royal family or the British monarch. The Crown is the private corporate city-state of London. It has a council of 12 members who rule the corporation under a mayor called the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor and his 12-member council serve as proxies or representatives who sit in for 13 of the world's wealthiest, most powerful banking families. This ring of 13 ruling families includes the Rothschild family, the Warburg family, the Oppenheimer family, and the Schiff family. These families and their descendants run the Crown Corporation of London. The Crown Corporation holds the title to worldwide ah. Crown land in Crown colonies oh. like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The British Parliament and the British Prime Minister serve as a public front for the hidden power of these ruling Crown families. Like the city-state of London and the Vatican, a third city-state was officially created in 1982. That city-state is called the District of Columbia and is located on 10 square miles of land in the heart of Washington. The District of Columbia flies its own flag and has its own independent constitution. 
Although geographically separate, the city-states of London, the Vatican, and the District of Columbia are one interlocking empire called Empire of the City. The flag of Washington's District of Columbia has three red stars, one for each city-state in the three-city empire. This corporate empire of three city-states controls the world economically through London's inner city, militarily through the District of Columbia, and spiritually through the Vatican. The constitution for the District of Columbia operates under a tyrannical Roman law known as Lex Fori, which bears no resemblance to the U.S. Constitution. When Congress passed the Act of 1871, it created a separate corporate government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act allowed the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and outside of the best interests of American citizens, Corporation of the United States. Like Canada and Australia, whose leaders are Prime Ministers of the Queen and whose land is called Crown Land, the United States is just another Crown Colony. Crown Colonies are controlled by the empire of three city-states. At the center of each city-state is a towering, phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. city-state, the obelisk, known as the Washington Monument, was dedicated to Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. The Secret of Brotherhood of Freemasons laid the Washington Obelisk's cornerstone in 1848 and contributed 22 Masonic memorial stones. 250 Masonic lodges financed the Washington Monument Obelisk, including the Knights Templar Masonic Order. At the heart of London city-state is a 187-ton, 69-foot-tall Egyptian obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle. It was transported from Egypt and erected on the banks of the River Thames. In Vatican City, another Egyptian obelisk towers high above St. Peter's Square. What exactly is an obelisk? Obelisks are phallic-shaped monuments honoring the pagan sun god of ancient Egypt called Amun-Ra. The spirit of this pagan god is said to reside within the obelisk. Obelisks symbolize the phallus and fertility. At the base of the obelisk is a sun-wheel circle symbolizing the vagina. Together, they depict male and female sexual union. The heroic fight with us. The Amis support us. The corrupt fear us. For we are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forget. We do not forgive. Expect us to expose you. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, that's a good start if you want to get into the real world. But on the theater play that was going on this weekend, uh, none of this stuff was ever mentioned. And what I mean by that is when all these problems of money and things were brought up, ISIS, they never talked about the obelisks. That's where the name comes from. ISIS, the symbols of freedom in America, in London, and supposedly in the Vatican, a Christian organization in quotes, ISIS was the one who created the first obelisk. And when you go back and look at some of my shows, Regarding that name, you'll see who she was, a, a goddess of the occult. And the myth was that she created this phallic symbol because after she collected all the parts of her husband, the one missing was his penis. And so that's exactly what she did. And so she created this obelisk, and then supposedly through magic, she created her son. She had become impregnated by her dead husband. That's what these symbols are. But you know what? This is all fiction that we do here, right? That's what they'll tell you. That's what that CIA head said about the two guys at the border. They were not really with us. That's crazy. The CIA does not deal in drugs. We're trying to stop that. It's completely opposite. You know it. I know it. But we live in the real world, and there are not many of us 
And so basically what happens is those of us that do have a real difficult time getting into their fictional world because they don't want anybody that doesn't, uh, you know, subscribe to their world. And so they keep you out. And that's why they control the media so that everyone stays in their fictional world. And last night was a great example. Now, look, I enjoy theater acting just like you do. And so there's a part of me that enjoyed that last night from a, from a theatrical entertainment point of view. But when it comes to reality, they basically withhold that from these plays, from this theater. And coming on again, the election, this is a big one they put on every four years. This is kind of like their, their Broadway show coming up here. And millions of people are going to be watching it and giving money for it and subscribing to the Theater of Life in Washington, D.C. So enjoy it. Uh, pick out your favorite actor. I do. At this point, my favorite actor is Bernie Sanders. I think he's the lead actor on the Democratic side, although he's going to fight that witch Hillary. Yes, here we go. And then on the Republican side, there's so many of these guys. Uh, my favorite, I have to admit, is Donald Trump. As an actor, he's doing a great job. And then I like Christie. He's doing a good job. They're all in there playing their part. And I look at it from a theatrical point of view. Now, as far as reality in real life, they're scumbags. And that's my thoughts about it. And so is the Pope. And so are all these big guys. The Pope, he plays the... <laughs> he's the lead kind of Pontus Maximus actor. We'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.